In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a charcuterie board out of pallet wood. So, I'll show you a picture of one that I just uh, finished up and uh, came out pretty cool looking. And I'm going to make another one. So, and show you how to do it too. So, I got a couple pieces of pallet wood here. I already took the pallet apart. Um, sometimes that's the hardest part of this project is getting these uh, apart without breaking them. And from what I found, the best thing to do is just get a jigsaw and cut along the edges and then just hammer out that middle piece of the pallet wood afterwards. Otherwise, if you try to use a hammer or pry bar to get the whole thing apart, it will probably break the boards. So <clears throat> we're in here in the shop at my dad's house right now. We're going to borrow his saw and cut these boards down to the size that I need. And then uh, we'll get started with the next steps. So stay tuned. Not sure how you pronounce that properly. There's a uh, charcuterie, charcuterie, charcucci. What's the other one I heard? True. Um, True. I don't know. The, there's there's a bunch of different ways. But anyways, uh, this is some wood that's going to go together that will either act as decor to hang on the wall because, as you saw in the uh, the photo that I showed you from the last one, there I did a wood burn on it also. So probably more of a decor thing uh, than actually going to be used for its proper purpose. Um, but either way, however you pronounce it, whatever works best for you. Okay, we got all those pieces cut, so next up we're going to start putting it together. Now this can be a pretty easy project, but there can be a lot of steps involved, so it can really be as easy or as difficult as you want it to be, depending on how you want it to come out and uh, what you want to do to it exactly. As far as the wood burn and all that stuff, the more you do, the more complex it gets. And processes of sanding, you know, there's a lot of steps to standing, sanding going from really rough grit to uh, take off a lot of the wood or uh, take off a lot of the material or um, all the way down to make it really smooth but depending on the finish that you put on it you may not have to go extremely smooth because the finish is going to cover that up anyway so I kind of learned that in the last project I, I sanded it down really smooth down to like 1400 grit so the thing felt like glass when you touched it and then I polyurethaned it and it, it's still extremely smooth, but putting the polyurethane on it made it to where I probably didn't need to sand it down as far as I did because you're not going to notice either way. So now we're going to uh, go back to my house and uh, put this thing together and then we'll start sanding it. Alright, here's what it's looking like so far. I've already sanded this half with uh, 60 grit. Sorry, I didn't show you how I put it together, but I just used these clamps here. Clamped this piece to one of the back pieces at a time. Screws are on the back so that you don't see them if it's if you're using it or if it's hanging on a wall and, uh, here's what it's looking like so uh, we'll just keep on sanding All right, so as you can see, we're making progress. Got a long ways to go though. The sanding takes a long time. I do a lot of sanding with the 60 grit. Uh, and then we go from 120 to 220 to 400, I believe. Um, those don't take quite as long um, as the 60 grit, because once I I do a lot with the 60 grit so I can, because I don't have a planer, so I basically use 60 grit sandpaper as my planer to try to get everything pretty smooth and flush with each other. And then um, the 120, 220, 400, that stuff goes a little bit faster because then I'm just kind of smoothing stuff out. But uh, I'm already on my, what, fourth sheet of 60 grit, and we still, still have quite a ways to go before I switch to 120. So 
Uh, it's just, it's not a hard project, but it, it just takes time. But we'll just keep on trucking. All right, so I've sanded this thing up to 400 and then did a little bit of sanding with uh, 1000 on my uh, orbital sander um, when the plug's in. Now I'm just doing a little bit of hand sanding. This is 3000 grit. This stuff is basically like paper smooth, just so you can get that kind of nice shiny finish. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, so we'll just do that over this real quick just to kind of finish it off I, I wish you could feel this this is so smooth and then uh we'll get started on the uh the wood burn portion of this board all right so we're pretty much done sanding we got it nice and smooth now it's got a nice shine to it didn't even need a finish but we're gonna do a polyurethane finish anyway so the next step we're moving on to the uh wood burning portion of this so uh, get some carbon paper I don't know where you can get it I got this on Amazon carbon paper uh, graphite paper and we've got it kind of centered up on the board here and we're gonna tape this down got this just holding here as a weight so it doesn't blow away since we're working outside and we're dealing with the wind here and then once we get that taped down then we will get the letter centered up and on there and get that taped down and then just grab a pencil and trace it on there and when you trace it it goes through the carbon paper and leaves a really nice print on the board that uh, is pretty easily seen and then we uh, start wood burning so uh, hang tight and we'll uh, get this thing taped down real quick all right so we're dealing with the wind here but uh we've got Two pieces taped down and then uh, we'll get the letter taped on here all right so we uh, traced the whole thing on here and now we're just going to take it off and if you plan on keeping this to reuse it again next time then cool if not just toss it away what's cool about this carbon paper though is uh, you can reuse it so if you can save it that's why I use this kind of scotch tape here you can pull it off without ripping it and uh, you can save it and reuse it for next time. So let's uh, pull this thing off and uh, see how it looks. my wood burner so I already have a tip on here I'm gonna start heating it up in just a second uh, bought this thing on Amazon came with all kinds of different tips that I could put on there got an extra um, pen if you're switching back and forth often that way you don't have to wait for it to cool off to switch which is nice and temperature adjustment so it's got all kinds of stuff so uh, let's get going <music>
so for most applications you would uh, stain this one time and then be done with it but I bought this stain the dark espresso and I did it on that other board and it was too dark kind of like how it's looking now so what I did is I let this dry and then I sand it back off with like a 1000 or 1400 grit sandpaper just to kind of make it look uh, distressed so we'll let this dry and then uh, we will sand it back off and we'll see how it looks after that coat of polyurethane on there and now we gotta let that sit up and dry for a couple hours and then believe it or not we're actually gonna sand that back off a little bit and then put one more coat of polyurethane on put the handles back on and we're done <laughs> Here it is in its final form. I'm not exactly sure what it looked like a little bit ago. I'll have to go back and look at the uh, camera footage, but uh, I made a little bit of a mistake. So learn from my mistake here. When you do the uh, the polyurethane on top, you're supposed to do uh, two layers of it. Or so you put a base coat on, let it dry completely, and then sand it back off a little bit with like they say to use like 400 grit, but I used 1500 grit, and then uh, go back and put another coat on. So what happened was I put my base coat on way too thick and I didn't let it dry long enough before I sanded it. So I started sanding it and it kind of made a goopy mess and uh, kind of messed the whole thing up honestly. So we had to take this thing all the way back down to bare wood and sand it all the way back down, start all the way back over, reburn the whole thing, restain it, sand the stain, and then uh, put the polyurethane on twice. So. Here it is in its final form. Got the, the handles on here now. Put the backers on the back so it'll hang. Um, that's pretty much it. That was probably a little bit lengthy for a whole how-to video, but um, this is how I make these guys. If you like this video, then uh, give it a thumbs up for me. That'll help. And uh, subscribe to my channel. We're gonna be doing some more stuff like this, except uh, I got a router now, finally. I've been wanting one for a long time. so. Um, we're going to be doing some epoxy fills uh, rather than a wood burn, so something like this, but uh, filled with a colored epoxy. So that'll be cool. So subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll start getting some of that out uh, pretty soon. Thanks for watching. See ya.